Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon New World tank and I'm having a little bit of an algae bloom right now. Yesterday I shot a video where I talked about the phosphate in this tank being a little bit elevated. It was getting up close to five parts per million, which is pretty high for a freshwater tank. The phosphate won't hurt the fish necessarily, but it will, uh, I said, it will cause algae blooms or it could cause algae blooms. And I wanna clarify that a little bit. Uh, it's not entirely accurate to say that the phosphate will cause an algae bloom. And that was really sort of bugging at me after I shot that video. I got to thinking more and more about it. With the phosphate in the tank being elevated the way it was, the only reason we were really even talking about that was because I tested the phosphate and we actually saw it. The vast majority of the time, we never bother to check for phosphate because it's not really that big of an issue in most of our tanks. As I've said many times in the past, we check for nitrate and we use the nitrate as a proxy. If the nitrate's starting to get up there, we do a water change and that not only reduces the nitrate, but it also reduces the phosphate and everything else that's starting to build up in the tank. So all we really need to do is kind of keep an eye on that nitrate level. That's not an exact way of doing it. There is times where your nitrate level won't get too high, but other things are still happening where you want to do water changes, etc. We're not going to get into that. But I got to thinking about this idea of the nitrate being a proxy for the phosphate. And it occurred to me that this tank always has nitrate through the roof, you know, a dark red vial when I test it. So the idea that the phosphate would be something new didn't sit right with me. I'm assuming that this tank with the, the organics I've gotten here and the way I feed it and all the fish that are in here and the heavy stock load, this tank probably always has phosphate through the roof, just like it's always gotten nitrate through the roof. So me, Doing what I did with the water chemistry, I added some mineralization to the water. I made it a couple degrees harder. I brought the carbonate hardness up a little bit, adjusted the pH just a little bit, and I got this algae explosion. So I don't think the phosphate itself was a cause for that. In fact, this tank probably has elevated phosphate all the time. And to prove that point, I decided to do one of my little experiments to satisfy my own curiosity. And I checked a few of my tanks and I checked the nitrate and phosphate levels in the tanks to see if they sort of lined up and matched up. Um, as I said, I did a bunch of water changes on this tank. I've got the nitrate down to about, mm, we'll say 15 parts per million. And the phosphate is down to right around one part per million. And that got me kind of scratching my head too. If I'm all the way down to 15 parts per million on the nitrate, I really should be lower than that on the phosphate. And so again, I started doing a few little comparison tests and what I found in my office tank kind of surprised me. It's got a really vigorously growing plant in it. So even though I don't do very frequent water changes on it, I didn't expect the nitrate to be too terribly high but I also didn't expect the phosphate to be too terribly high either. And what we saw surprised me. So let's go have a look at the phosphate test from my office tank upstairs. All right. The nitrate came out about where I was expecting it. I did a couple of gallon water change on it not too long ago, a few days ago. And so we got about what I was expecting. I'm going to call that 30 parts per million. It's orange, but it's getting up towards that sort of reddish end. So it's nowhere near 40 parts yet, but we're, you know, getting there. My phosphate, on the other hand, I know a lot of you probably aren't familiar with the color coding on the phosphate test. It's hard to do this with one hand, but we're going to try. If you look at the color coding on that, we are much closer, if I can get my hand out of the way, to the five parts per million or more, maybe, than we are to the two parts per million, even if I hold it away from the card. That is dark. That is a lot of nitrate. I mean, uh, phosphate. So if phosphate caused an algae explosion or algal growth, my office tank would also have green water. In fact, a lot of my tanks would have green water because that I found as I started checking a few of my other tanks is not that unusual for some of my tanks that are a little uh, less well-maintained. And what I find interesting is the ratio. I don't have really high nitrate, but I've got ridiculously high phosphate or bowling pins. Um, if you want to go by the idea that you should always keep your phosphate in your freshwater tank below one part per million, 
that's really high. Again, it's not going to harm the fish, but it will exacerbate any kind of algal growth that you've already got going on. If you've got cyanobacteria in there, that might also uh, affect that. Again, it kind of puzzles me a little bit as to how, if we're using one as a proxy to the other, why is this one reasonable? I'd check that and say there's no reason to do a water change at all. But when I look at that, I'd say, man, when's the last time I did a water change on this tank? That's ridiculous. So not really sure why I'm getting that extreme variation between the levels. But anyway, long story short, I know it's too late for that, but it is not phosphates that cause the algal, algal explosion. It just allows for that to happen. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that quick little experiment. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you real soon in the next one.